Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the new Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Direct Hit and Power Punch, also known as the Battle Squad. They are number 40 in the Earthrise toy line. And if you're wondering to yourself, this seems familiar. Did he review these guys before? Yes. Yes, I did. Back in Siege. However, I thought it was a good chance to take a look at just kind of the updated version of these. The toys themselves are exactly the same, but they have new packaging. They do come with a matte piece, which is the only reason I bought a second set of these. Uh, my son, my oldest, will be joining us today because after I get this review done, these are going to go to him. So it seems fitting. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toys and their packaging, and we'll open it up. We'll see the map piece, we'll see the instructions, and then we'll see Direct Hit and Power Punch themselves in both their vehicle, combined vehicle, weapon, and robot modes. I'll do some group shots with a regular duo, just so you can see that there's no difference between them, or perhaps we will spot a small difference. You never know. And then at the end of the video, of course, look at my final thoughts. So Direct Hit and Power Punch, they look almost exactly the same in packaging as they did in Siege. Even uses the same artwork here with them in their individual vehicle modes. The only difference is now it's got Earthrise logos and coloring and all that stuff. So there's that. And I wanna say I'm pretty positive that these two were originally designed for Earthrise and then were brought uh, forward in Siege to help flesh it out a bit toward the end. Kinda of like Astro Train. They seem to fit the motif of Earthrise more than Siege. On the back, you got the renders of the characters in their uh, robot and vehicle modes. It shows fast track wielding them in their just the weapon or bazooka mode, which is really just their combined vehicle mode, upside down, but whatever. Uh, five steps to transform direct hit, four steps to transform power punch. Calls out their team name right here, Battle Squad, and that's really it. You can see their map piece inside. All right, let's open these guys up. All right, so here's the map piece. A uh, little more exciting than Double Crossers. It's part of a planet, so at least there's something in this picture. Hello, Mike. Really? <laughs> Anywho, um, here's the instructions. You can see you got Power Punch and Direct Hit here on the front. Number 40, all that good stuff. Open it up. And you get transformation from a robot to vehicle modes for each of them, as well as, I guess, this just showing you how to plug his weapon in if it's not already plugged in. Then on the back, you got how to combine their vehicle modes and then how to uh, flip it upside down to make it a gun. And this is showing them off with Airwave, who I still don't have. Still. Still don't have it. Why they won't release these deluxes already, I'll never know. All right, moving on. All right, now we have Power Punch and Direct Hit in their vehicle modes. And uh, I don't know, what do you think, man? Um, You're up. They're pretty cool. cool. I like that this gun can move. I don't know if it can come off, can it come off? Yeah, you can pull it off, but it's not like... You can, and you just make it like a handgun for someone else if you want to, but okay. I don't wanna do that. Put so much stress in the plastic. And it can lock into the, the top here if you want it straight, or you can lift it up and point it any which way. And yep, yeah, that's it for the vehicle modes. Okay, and now we have the seed releases for comparison to see if there's any difference between them. And interestingly, there appears to be some very minor differences in the paint colors used. So on Power Punch here, this like dark blue color on the sides, it's a little brighter, a little more vivid on the new release than the old one. And a bit more shiny. More shiny, yeah, kinda, yeah, it is. So that's interesting. And then on direct hit, you can see that the silverish color on top for these guns is darker, as well as the like black paint used here, right? Like on this release, it's the same color as this back portion here, these are actually darker than this back portion. So that's interesting. Uh, the yellows, they look a little brighter on this one. Silvers appear to be the same. And the blues, um, those are a little hard to tell. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like this. Looks a bit darker. Yeah, it does look a little darker, doesn't it? So that's interesting. Not there. 
faces. Well, that looks the same, more or less. Well, I think the purple's looks, a little different. This one looks brighter, the face of this one looks brighter. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Very interesting. Let's see the other sides of these. Uh, I kind of get it for Siege because Siege is when they're in the war. Well, yeah, but these are supposed to be re-releases, not like recolors. Uh, faces, I can't really see a difference, but the, I think the blues have that same very faces. slight difference between them. I think the faces are the same. Mm, this one, this one's a, like a bit lighter than this one. I don't know. I'll have to agree to disagree, I guess. So, interestingly enough, there are some slight differences in paint color between these. Now, normally, I guess maybe you could chalk it up to aging, um, because the Siege ones are, you know, they were released a little longer ago. However, I don't think photo degradation has any part in it, because where I keep these, it's very, very dark. So, I just, I don't see that being a factor. Maybe as the paint ages, it changes shade a little bit. That, or they just didn't perfectly match the paints. So, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that, because the other re-releases I've seen have been, like, one for one. So, hmm. I wonder if that's just my copies, or if they're all like that. If anybody owns both, uh, let me know if you have the same situation. I'd love to, love to find out. Alright, now for this super complex transformation to their combined vehicle mode. You guys ready? Pay attention. I'm only going to show this once, and it's... It's a doozy. So you take this peg, you flip it down, you do this. Oh my god. I'm glad we made it through that together. I'm not sure everybody made it to the other side. So here's the combined vehicle mode, you know, highlighting the gimmick of these guys being MicroMaster combiners, right? They have one combined vehicle mode. And unlike the, uh, the space team, the Astro Squad, they can actually have standalone vehicles. The Astro Squad can't, so, you know, I still think these are the better toy. Um, the handle can still go up and down and point around and all that. Rolls just fine, so that's nice. And then, of course, if you flip it upside down and turn it around, it's now a bazooka, because reasons. All right, to help show it off for us, here's old Ramjet from that Seeker 2-pack. That was an Amazon exclusive. And uh, this, this weapon mode definitely works better for larger toys. It's going to be a bit cumbersome for a deluxe or smaller to hold it, so... Figure we should bust out a Voyager. All right, here we're bringing in Dirge just to let us do our side by side between the Earthrise and Siege versions. Again, aside from paint, no discernible differences. But you know, if you have both, you can dual wield them. So that's pretty cool, I guess. What do you think, man? Of the weapon mode. Mm, looks a lot like something from Fortnite, like the end. Fortnite. Yeah, like there is a um. Bazooka with uh, four. Oh, really? Yeah. I wouldn't know. Alrighty, so now that we got that, we're gonna transform these guys to robot mode. I'm not gonna show that one off for time reasons, but if you do wanna see the transformation, just check out the review for the Siege version of these toys, in case you need help with that. Alright, here are Direct Hit and Power Punch in the robot modes. And again, nothing really new here. You got big old Decepticon symbols on their abdomens. Uh, use two different colors of paint for the faces. So you got bright yellow on Power Punch and then like a gold color on Direct Hit. And Power Punch uses looks like a combination of like dark gray and silver. Oh, that might all just be one color actually. He uses like purple on his chest. And you know they just they just look really good together. They have very different silhouettes but matching color schemes which is you know to me ideal right. They look like they're on a team but they don't look the same. Uh, despite the back kibble, they're not very back heavy. They stand up quite well. Uh, they got the ball jointed shoulders that can actually raise up and down a bit because of transformation. Their heads do turn pretty easily too. Oh, yeah. So you can make them look different ways if you want to. Yeah, well, it's going to be hard to see. Well, yeah. Uh, this guy's got ball jointed hips and then a hinged knees. This guy has all the same articulation, except his knees are on ball joints, so you also get like a bit of a knee swivel there if you want to. Of course, their feet are molded in place, so it's going to limit how much you can actually pose them. But, yeah, that's what you're working with. Alright, what do you think, homie? Um, I say, think that they used a good choice in making the legs heavy, because 
since they're back heavy, they needed to do that or they would fall They need over. to be weighed down? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that's very true. What do you think of their colors and stuff? Do you dig it? Is it too loud and bright for you? Um, between those. Between that? Kind of cool, but also burns your eyeballs? Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. That's that 90s goodness right there, man. It looks like some G2 Transformers. Kind of. There, there was this... Definitely this transitional period where like the G1 toys started looking quite a bit like what would become G2 toys. So, very true, very true. All right, here's one last look at the Siege versions next to them. Just so you can see that they're more or less the same. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Now, rather than give you my final thoughts on this, because I already did with the Siege toys, I will turn you over to Mr. No Cube here. What do you think, man? I think they're pretty cool because they have some nice detail, especially on the heads. For heads that small, they added a face. Okay. Um, I like that they added a movable gun on the back of these guys. Okay. And I like that you can connect them together to make like something like a fire truck. Well, it's like a fire giant engine. military vehicle. It's not a fire engine. Got a cannon on it. But yeah, I mean, it is cool, like, you know, I always think combiners are awesome, and I think you like them a lot too, seeing as you have about half the number I do at this point, huh? You got a lot. So, would you recommend other people getting this? Um, yes. If they, um, if they have both, from both Siege and Earthrise, I think it would be cool if you could, like, if you even had two Deluxes that basically use the same layout, you can connect both of them and give them both weapons. Okay, cool. So you heard it here, straight from the mouth of babes. So now the important part is what do you all think? Will you be picking these two up? Do you already have the Siege version and don't want to double dip? Or is that little piece of cardboard enough to get you to drop another 10 bucks and be a sucker like me? No offense if that's you, but I feel like a sucker for buying these again. Uh, any and all feedbacks, always welcome in the comment section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me and the YouTuber known as NoQ for this look, the second look at Direct Hit and Power Punch. And with all that said, I will see you next time.